Jimmy Hall's dark secret is not what we all thought. In this video, I explain why that is and uncover the reality of Jimmy's shocking past. Now at dead of night seems simple at first glance. You play as Maya who checks into a hotel with five of her friends and you all get locked under pursuit by the hotel proprietor, Jimmy Hall, when you refuse to watch his comedy act. Then you need to communicate with the dead to uncover the reasons behind their deaths and how they all connect to Jimmy. Meanwhile, Jimmy tries to stop you. But why does he do this? Doesn't it seem rather peculiar that Jimmy tries to stop Maya from communicating with the dead, let alone believe in it? Well, regardless of what he believes, the dead have an incriminating story to tell about his childhood. A young girl, Amy, tells us that Jimmy stole her things and forced her to drink alcohol, which made her think that she could fly. That didn't end well. Dr. Bose tells us that Jimmy was very troubled and not cooperative with his psychiatric treatment. He tried to get Jimmy to participate, but that didn't end well either. Harvey was one of the previous proprietors of the hotel and didn't believe anything that Jimmy said. Harvey's crusade to expose Jimmy led him to turn a gun on him, but Jimmy was always one step ahead. His mother Rose was very protective of Jimmy and wanted to figure out what was going on with him as he became more aggressive, displaying odd behaviours and smashing mirrors. By the time she figured out why Jimmy changed, it was too late. Rose knew that Jimmy would have gotten her too, so she, well... Yeah, our precious flower burned out. Now many people would look at this and say that except for Harvey, Jimmy didn't really exterminate any of these people. But I would say otherwise. Jimmy's true motives form one part of his dark secrets. Just look at the series of events. Amy was forced to be drunk, in turn causing her to try to fly. Amy knew that drinking would be bad for her, but she had to go against her will since Jimmy was threatening her. Dr. Burrs was framed, forced into a situation where everyone in society thought he was a predator. This was all because of Jimmy's lie. Just a reminder that Burrs passed away while on bail, so he had a permanent criminal record of this that would not pass with any employer. His life was effectively over, either way. Harvey was straight up stabbed in the neck, so that's undeniable. And Rose simply knew the consequences of confessing what she did to Jimmy's father Hugo, and decided to take matters into her own hands instead. Yeah, even Rose, who had defended Jimmy so strongly from the very beginning, came to realise what Jimmy had done and was capable of. Or rather, Hugo Punch. But who exactly is Hugo Punch? This is where things might get hazy, unless you've played At Dead of Night several times. Hugo Punch, not to be confused with Hugo Hall, Jimmy's father, is a being that resides in Jimmy's consciousness and is a persona of the comedy act that Jimmy performed. Hugo Hall, on the other hand, is a performer who took his magic act to the hotel, attracting more guests. He formed a relationship with Rose that turned rocky fast, to which Rose thought having a child would ease things up. But she was wrong. Hugo just became more aggressive, and even started to beat Jimmy for two years since his birth. It's no wonder that Rose was so protective of Jimmy all along. In fact, she's the one who took matters into her own hands in the first place. One night, when Hugo was beating Jimmy, she eliminated Hugo and buried him under concrete that she mixed herself in the basement of the hotel. But as Jimmy grew up, Rose found that he was becoming just like Hugo Hall. Like father, like son. But she knew that somehow, Jimmy wasn't under control of his body. Instead, it was Hugo Punch. Jimmy created the Hugo Punch Act to free his mind from the allegations against him from Dr. Bose and Harvey. The act was supposed to be a symbol of transformation and a turning point that would lead to the success of the hotel, and for the most part, it worked. Hugo Punch successfully brought money back to the dying business of the hotel, but there was something strange about Jimmy's new persona. Rose noticed that Jimmy was doing more and more erratic things. He went from drawing disturbing images, to shouting into mirrors, to setting up rows of mannequins with his face taped onto them. He even started smashing mirrors. One night, a guest of his show did not appreciate Hugo Punch's controversial humour, so he abducted her, tied her up, and locked her in a room. As Rose put it, Jimmy was fracturing on the inside. After the abducted woman was found, she reported what happened to the newspapers, marking the end of Jimmy's success streak as Hugo Punch, and effectively, the end of the business for the hotel as well. Jimmy hated what he was doing as Hugo Punch and tried to drown himself in a bathtub. And that's when Rose stopped him and told him the truth about what happened to his father. 
But Jimmy finding Hugo Hall's grave was the final straw, causing him to completely become the character that he despised. Earlier, I said that Hugo Punch is separate from Jimmy's father, but Jimmy's story might cause some to believe otherwise. After all, Hugo Hall hurt Jimmy, and then was absent for most of his life because of what Rose had done. Then Jimmy was completely taken over by Hugo Punch when he learned the truth about his father, so how could they not be one and the same? Some might also point to Jimmy's early childhood suffering and claim that he developed a psychological disorder, but that was already ruled out in the options menu by the developers, at least for dissociative identity disorder. If all of this is true, where exactly did Hugo Punch come from? Throughout At Dead of Night, Maya comes across several rooms with mystical and occult items in them. Among these items, she finds scrying mirrors, spirit boxes, herbs, and the list goes on. Also, some of these items aren't just there for decoration. Maya uses a select few to locate and communicate with the souls of the dead. The world of At Dead of Night clearly has a supernatural theme to it, paralleling the real world, and it's something that we need to take into account to get answers. Some keen prodigies out there might ask what Maya having supernatural powers might have to do with Hugo Punch. After all, maybe Hugo has all of these occult items in the hotel and just wants to confine Maya because he knows she can use them well. But the clue lies in what he says at the end of the game. The fire has been burning down the halls for centuries, and it's burning in you too, Maya. Which means that not only does Maya have a supernatural power, but so does Hugo. So, what is Hugo's power, and what is the true secret that Jimmy has been hiding from us this whole time? To answer this, we need to explore the previous game made by Baggy Cat, the developer, known as Contradiction. Now, you don't need to know much about the story of Contradiction. To give a one-sentence summary, it's about a cocky detective who goes to a small town to solve a murder mystery. It's a great game if you like to think hard, and I highly recommend it, but do keep in mind that what I'm about to say will involve spoilers. Besides, the reason Contradiction is important isn't because of the story, but rather some of the elements in it and how they are explained. Let's start with the Scrying Mirrors, one of the first mystical items you find in Contradiction. Contradiction explains that Scrying Mirrors are mirrors painted black that people use to practice the art of scrying. Scrying is an activity where people conduct self-hypnosis. This is done to explore the mind, clear the mind, and communicate with the dead. And what does Maya do with the scrying mirror? That's right, she communicates with the dead. In Contradiction, the character who sells scrying mirrors explains that people use them even if they don't believe in what they do, which tells us that some people aren't capable of contacting the deceased. This provides evidence that Maya had a special gift not many are capable of, and it's an important distinction, because we only get to experience what Maya and Jimmy are capable of in At Dead of Night. Maya's friends simply run out of the hotel. Now if you're not weirded out yet, don't worry, things are about to get more messed up. Contradiction also has a bunch of items of the occult, such as masks and effigy dolls. These are used in a strange business course called Atlas. To understand how Jimmy's secret in At Dead of Night connects with Contradiction, it's important to have an idea of what Atlas does and is about. The Atlas course, previously known as Third Eye, involves a range of strange activities designed to create the perfect business person. The leader of the course studied Satanism when he was young, and incorporated ritualistic practices to mold the minds of his students in Atlas. The main goal for students in Atlas is to become the prime candidate, the top student who would be offered a high-paying job on the spot. Students go to many lengths to become the prime candidate through testing procedures, some even do threshold testing, which is a method to see how much pain they can tolerate. They also perform rituals where they gather around a fire and burn effigy dolls that represent their past selves. The whole idea is to let go of who they once were, so they can move on and start anew as a successful business person. Potentially the scariest of all Atlas's procedures is auto-hypnosis and hypnosis. Auto-hypnosis is self-hypnosis, which is encouraged by Atlas by meditating to sound prompts in a room filled with mirrors. The sound prompts aim to separate students' consciousness from their personas that others see in their day-to-day -day lives, and they aim to separate themselves from the guilt that plagues the average human being. After all, guilt has no place in business. They also give instructions for the threshold testing that was mentioned before, but that's only if the students make it to that part. While not specifically mentioned in the game itself, I strongly believe that hypnosis is part of the game as well. 
Near the end of the game, the leader of Atlas performs a satanic chant and commands his masked student to harm an unknown woman with a knife. This appears to be a test to see whether the student would have the guts to do the same thing to the main character, who the Atlas leader thinks is trying to shut down Atlas. The reason this could be hypnosis is because the student doesn't put his knife down when the main character, a police officer, asks him to, but does so immediately when the Atlas leader who performed the satanic chanting asks him to. Atlas? Third Eye? Whatever you wish to call it, it all basically seems like a twisted version of the Illuminati, disguised as a business course. Satanic rituals, discarding your past self, freeing yourself from guilt, and hypnosis. This all seems oddly specific to what we see in At Dead of Night. At the end of the game, we can see that Jimmy is suffering because he's been taken over by Hugo Punch, and we also know that Jimmy inflicted dire harm on others. At the surface, it seems as if Jimmy was brainwashed into doing these things against his will, and the darkest depths of his mind were drawn to the surface, while his conscience was suppressed. We also know that Jimmy became somewhat of a business success, bringing in money for the hotel with his Hugo Punch act. Perhaps Jimmy's father was able to perform Atlas's brainwashing techniques while Jimmy was still just a baby. We've seen that Atlas uses disturbing and harmful techniques to create the perfect business person, so what if Hugo Hall beating Jimmy was part of a greater process to do this? It would be a tantalizing conclusion, but that can't be the end of it. It just doesn't seem right that Jimmy would be capable of being brainwashed or hypnotized at the age of two. He doesn't even remember his father, and we still haven't accounted for the satanic rituals mentioned in Contradiction. Well, there is one final piece to the puzzle that could help explain Jimmy's dark secret once and for all. In Contradiction, Atlas took on a young student who ended up reacting badly to their methods. She started to see visions of an older woman who resembled her in the mirrors, but soon came to realize that that woman was her. She feared the old woman she saw, causing her to cover up and avoid all mirrors unless she was in a well-lit area. But who could this woman be? The student believes that the old woman is a demon implanted in her when she went to Atlas. Based on her experience, Atlas entrances its students and summons demons to implant into them, and once they get in, they can't get out. The leader of Atlas denies that any of this happens, of course, but the evidence of all the satanic rituals and exercises to erase one's old self is too hard to ignore. It seems that Atlas takes its students, destroys their past selves, and then puts a demon in the hypnotized husk that remains. Which brings us back to Jimmy. It seems very unlikely that something similar happened to Jimmy, whether his father performed a ritual to do so or otherwise. Jimmy becomes haunted by a demon that resembles an older version of himself, except he simply had less control shouting at mirrors and smashing them to try to get away instead of simply covering up like the student in contradiction. But there is still one big problem. The time periods. You see, Jimmy was born in 1976. We know this from his birth certificate that we find in the game. Atlas, on the other hand, was founded around 2015 at the earliest, which is the birth year of one of the newest participants plus 21, the youngest you can be to become part of Atlas. Even if you consider Atlas being Third Eye the year prior, that leaves us with a date around 2014. Unless Third Eye was around for longer than we know in Contradiction. And honestly, given the Illuminati vibe that the Third Eye gave, I wouldn't discard the idea of it being an age-old organization. In At Dead of Night, we learn that the fire has been burning down the halls for generations. So it seems like the Third Eye has existed longer than any of the characters we've discussed have been alive, passing on their fire or demons, to generations of unsuspecting people chasing success. There must have been someone in the whole bloodline who initiated a demonic curse upon themselves and passed it down to their children. Each new generation achieving financial success at the cost of uncontrollable aggression and a lack of empathy for the old, the weak, and the young. But this had intense consequences for Jimmy. In contradiction, the young girl who was inhabited by a demon retained a piece of her consciousness which kept her ground with her persona. In performing Atlas's exercises, it seems that she couldn't get rid of her past self because she hadn't had much of a past self to get rid of. She simply hadn't fully developed yet. In fact, she is the reason why an age limit was introduced to Atlas. Jimmy, on the other hand, had no past self at all, and was just starting his life when he was inhabited by a demon at the age of two. He grew up fighting with the demon, but each time, the demon won out. 
He couldn't even get away from the demon by smashing mirrors anymore. It just appeared before him wherever he went. At the end of At Dead of Night, we get to see a few quotes from a famous psychologist called Carl Jung. Jung explained that each and every person has a dark side to them, a shadow, and they should embrace this dark side and develop it or else they wouldn't know what they were truly capable of. Leaving one's shadow unaddressed could lead to awful and destructive consequences of proportions you wouldn't even expect, which seems similar to the demon that inhabited the character in Contradiction, and Jimmy in At Dead of Night. It appears that the point of Atlas is to harness one's shadow in preparation of being possessed. However, Jimmy didn't even have a chance to develop his shadow, because the demon was already developed for centuries beyond his time along the whole bloodline, burning each log in the fire. It appears that when the previous host for the demon dies, it gets passed on like a curse. There was no way a child could tame a power of that magnitude, and so he grew up being subdued by it, as we can see in the ending. Jimmy never had a chance. Rose never saw the demonic side of Jimmy when he made Amy drunk, or disobeyed Dr. Bose, or even when Harvey warned her. All she saw was her precious child who was beaten as a baby and needed to be protected at all costs. It was not until Jimmy started playing the character of Hugo Punch, truly giving in to the success that the demon within him afforded, that things started to become crystal clear. But despite her apparent naivety, Rose really was right in the end. Jimmy was a sweet, emotive person, and definitely did not have a mental ailment. As we've seen earlier in this video, it wasn't Jimmy harming others and ruining lives. It was a centuries-old demon affectionately called Hugo Punch.